Here is a picture I will use to go over various bounding box formats. Normally when you are making plots and using a coordinate system, the bottom left represents starting coordinates. But when it comes to images, we use the top left as the starting coordinates, like this. Which means the y axis is increasing from top to bottom and x is increasing from left to right. And therefore the coordinate for the right bottom of the picture will be here. This image is of size 640 by 426, width is 640 and height is 426. We also give names to these coordinates of the image. X min, Y min for the starting coordinate that is the left top coordinates and X max, Y max for the right bottom coordinates. I'll be describing now the bounding box format using only one object in this picture, the big giraffe. There is a corresponding Google Colab notebook for this tutorial and you will find the link to it in the description. Here I only show the relevant parts. The first bounding box format follows the same convention as we have used to define our image. That is using X min, Y min, X max and Y max. Normally you can use a list or a tuple but I like to have a proper class so that the static analysis tools can arrest bugs and of course it enhances the readability. You can see the definition of the bounding box here. I have written this utility function to overlay the boxes on the image. Uh, you can look into the details of this function in the notebook. And here is how the resulting image with overlaid bounding box would look like. The X min, Y min are for the top left of the bounding box and X max, Y max are for the bottom right of the bounding box. This is the format used by Pascal VOC dataset for object detection. Personally, I use this format when I'm writing my own functions. And also the TorchVision library, which is an officially supported library in PyTorch ecosystem, uses this format for their API as well. You can see that it provides bunch of operators or APIs to do variety of manipulations on the boxes. Box area, box IOU, uh, NMS, and on top of that, the format is used in the loss functions the, that they provide. Now, let's look at the second format. As you can see, we needed the two corners for the Pascal VOC format. For the next one, I'll remove the bottom right corner like this. And instead use the height and the width of the bounding box. It should not be very difficult to see how one can easily get width and height if we have the bottom right coordinates and vice versa as well. In the spirit of defining this bounding box format properly, like the way I did earlier, I am again going to use a name tuple. Instead of X max, Y max, this time around we have width and height of the box. This bounding box format is used in the largest object detection dataset called Coco dataset and hence I'm calling it Coco Bounding Box. You can see here the difference from the bounding box definition that I had earlier. The width and height replaces X max and Y max. I also wanted to show the use of TorchVision API to convert between various formats. Uh, by the way, in TorchVision, they call Pascal VOC format XY XY format and the output format here is going to be uh, that the input format is XYWH which is a COCO bounding box format. The conventions or abbreviations do make sense to me and should make sense to you as well. Since two formats or two ways of defining the same thing are not sufficient, let's look at one more uh, format. In this format, we will be using height and width, meaning similar to that of Coco bounding box, but instead of using X min and Y min, this time we will use the center of the bounding box. I have this bounding box as well, uh, defined it using a name tuple and calling it CXCYWH bounding box because of my lack of imagination when it comes to naming things. As you can see, the first two fields are now different. 
Torch region has support to convert CX, CY, WH format as well to any other format you desire. Now, so far, all the formats that I have described are using absolute coordinates in the image space. The next format is essentially same as that of CX, CY, uh, WH format, but the values of these coordinates are normalized. And to do the normalization of the coordinates, we need the height and width of the image, which we can get from our NumPy image object. Here is a little function that can do the job for us. Essentially, you would divide the CX and width by the image width and CY and height by the image height. Normalization essentially would put the coordinate values between 0 and 1. This is useful as now the boxes are sort of independent of the size of the image. So if you resize the image, then you need to multiply the height and width with these normalized coordinates to get the absolute coordinates in that resized image. Now this resulting normalized CX, CY, WH bounding box format or specification is the one used by YOLO, the most famous object detection method. There are now data sets that are prepared using this format and some of the open source re repos, they expect you to have your data set in this format. Actually, there are a few more variants, but I believe if you're familiar with three of these formats or actually four, if you include the YOLO variant, then you're good to go. However, my humble recommendation here is that your own code base should not have mix of multiple formats. Try to use only one of them and use it consistently. The reason is that all these formats are still using four values or numbers x min, y min, x max, y max, four of them, cx, cy, width, height, four of them. And if you do not know which format you are using, your function or API might have some bugs. It will just operate on an invalid uh, bounding box. And of course, the readability will suffer. Sometimes the use of name tuple uh, will help. Sometimes it will not because if you are passing tensors instead of pure Python name tuples, then, you know, unless you define your tensor to be strongly typed, you would lose the information about which bounding box format has been passed. So there is a possibility of having this confusion in your code base. That's why I am suggesting use one of them and use one of them consistently. And that's all I have for today. See you in the next tutorial in this series very soon. Bye bye.